Hi, and thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this demo. My name is Tony Johnson with Eternity. I'm the Federal Sales Manager assigned to the Department of Defense. This is part two of a four-part series. In this demo, we'll be focusing on validating end-user performance problems and availability issues. Demos three and four will focus on proactive incident detection, automatically generating SLAs, and visibility into lost productivity. Let's get started. One of the most common questions we get from organizations that are in reactive support mode is, can you help us validate end user application performance and availability complaints? Ideally, when an end user calls the help desk, the support team needs to quickly be able to validate whether or not a user is really having a problem, and if they are, determine how many other users may be experiencing that same problem. Let's take an example of a user named Adam. Adam calls the help desk complaining that his desktop machine is running slow. What does it mean that Adam's desktop machine is running slow? Slow compared to what? How do most support organizations handle a problem like this? Perhaps they might go to a user's device or remote to their machine where they may conduct a series of stopwatch timing tests on some functions. Maybe they see a particular function a user is doing that is taking 10 seconds. Well, so what? Is 10 seconds good? Is it bad? A support person has no real basis for comparison to know if 10 seconds is good or bad. So they're forced to troubleshoot every it's slow type of problem without first knowing what the user actually experienced. And even if they do know, they have no frame of reference to determine whether or not the app behavior constitutes an actual problem. Also, and perhaps more importantly, they don't know whether or not other users are experiencing the same problem. They have no way of understanding the magnitude of impact this problem could be having on the organization. Now let's dive into how the help desk would address Adam's call using Eternity. Same scenario, Adam calls the help desk complaining that his desktop is running slow. The first thing we do is type Adam's name into the search box of the management console. Our search results provide us with some interesting information about Adam. We can see his desktop is a Dell Latitude. We can see information about his CPU, his memory, operating system, what subnet he's on. We can also see he runs apps on three different devices, his desktop, an iPad, and a smartphone. We can see this because we're monitoring app performance on all of his devices. When Adam called the help desk, he mentioned he was having slow performance on his desktop. So let's drill into the specific user experience for that device. We now have a view of all the activities that Adam's been doing on that device. We can see application performance, device performance, application crashes, blue screens of death, and even machine boot and logons. It looks like Adam's been running quite a few applications. We see the specific functions he's been accessing and how long it's been taking for those functions to respond in seconds. Based on the color coding, we can quickly see whether or not these activities are in compliance with our SLAs or if they've deviated. Now it looks like Adam's been having a number of application issues, but by far Siebel appears to be the worst offender. Siebel's a web-based application, but from our perspective it doesn't really matter because we monitor any type of application, whether it's a thin client, a thick client, a web-based application, or even mobile applications. So let's drill down even further and see just how poorly Siebel's been performing for Adam. By clicking here on the bar, we can isolate just those poorly performing functions. As we can see, this immediately validates Adam has in fact been experiencing a performance problem. We can see it's just one function within Siebel that's most likely prompted Adam's call, and that's the search account function. This also tells us it's not the entire application that's running slow, but just the search account function. It looks like he uses this function quite often, and on average it's taking between 12 and 13 seconds, which based on our color coding indicates an SLA breach. Let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. In a matter of just a couple of minutes, with just a few clicks of the mouse, we validated Adam really is having a performance problem. The problem is specifically with the search account function within Siebel, and the rest of the Siebel application is running normally within our established SLAs. In many organizations, this type of validation is done by the Tier 1 Help Desk team. At this point, the problem could be turned over to the next tier in the support organization for further action, but let's continue our investigation. Since we validated Adam was really having a problem, what we need to know now is whether or not it was just Adam having the problem or are there other users experiencing the same problem. Here we can see the exact number of times Adam experienced the problem. Let's drill down into the application status of Siebel as a whole. This number represents that same performance deviation occurring on all devices throughout the organization. This is a much larger number than the number that's just related to Adam. Here we can see all affected users are in the Eastern United States. 
So now we know the magnitude of impact is larger than just Adam, and I would say that this is a problem our organization wants to resolve. Let's hover over this bar and click on the Activity Analysis link. This drills into a breakdown of what's going on within Siebel for the Search Account function. We're able to see how much of the response time is on the user's device with respect to the client processing and rendering of the screens versus time spent within the infrastructure. We can see here the majority of the response time is actually taking place out on the infrastructure. We can see the size of the payloads, incoming response and outgoing request. All of this is charted so we can show trends. We would be able to see spikes in request and response times or if there were spikes in client and infrastructure time. We can also see the servers that are offering up the search account function. We can immediately see there's one particular server whose infrastructure time is much higher than its peers. This allows us to quickly eliminate the client as the potential cause of the problem and focus on the real culprit, one poorly performing server. We could now use our traditional APM server monitoring tools to drill down into exactly what's happening on the server, determine what the problem is, and fix it. In the next video, we're going to kick it up a notch by demonstrating how we can proactively detect and alert on problems like this before end users ever have a chance to call the help desk. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.